Hello everybody and welcome back to another SFML tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to explain to you how to draw a cube to the screen. So first of all, why do we need cubes? Well, cubes are the easiest shapes to work with, since we can specify a size simply by giving a width and a height, and then we can give it a texture, and using transparency we can actually make it whatever shape we want. So we can add a character on there and only like give it a human shape, or we can add a circle on there. So how do we actually create a cube? The way that we do that is we type in SF rectangle shape. So now it's time to give it a name, so let's call it player, since we're later going to move it around. So now as parameters in the constructor, we can give it a size. And a size in this case is specified as a vector 2f. So what is a vector? It basically contains an x coordinate and a y coordinate, and that's it. So in this case, we can use it for width and height. You can do way more complex things with vectors, but we're not going to talk about those things right now, since they're not important yet. So let's create an SF vector 2f. It's important that we create a vector 2f, which stands for float. You also have a vector 2i, which stands for integer, and vector 2u, which stands for unsigned integer. But never create a vector 2. A vector 2 basically doesn't contain any type yet. We need to specify whatever type we want it to be. So SFML made it easy for us and gave us a float, integer, and an unsigned integer. So now that we've created a vector 2f, we need to give it two different values inside of the constructor. The width of our character and the height of our character. So let's just create a character with the size of 100 by 100. So now it's time to draw the character. How do we draw in SFML? Well, drawing things is actually pretty easy. What we simply need to call is window, since we want to draw it to the window, a draw. And then we specify what we're going to draw in here. So I'm just, in this case, just player. And now, in order to actually display it, so in order to push all the different draw things that we called to the screen, we need to call window.display. The way that most games nowadays print to the screen is using two different buffers. So basically, inside of the computer, you have two different screens that you print to. Your front buffer and you have your back buffer. The first thing that you're going to do is you're going to print to the back buffer. So everything that you want to draw, you draw on the back buffer. And then whenever you call this play, you're going to swap them around. So what used to be the back buffer is now the front buffer. And what used to be the front buffer is now the back buffer. So now you draw to what used to be the front buffer. And then when you call this play again, you swap them around again. So you constantly keep doing that for every frame. And that way you will never have some weird problems that you can have if an image is not completely drawn yet when you try to display it. So now if you run the program again, you will see that we have a little white box on the side of a black screen. We can actually change the color of the box pretty easily, so let's do it right now. Up here where we created a rectangle, we can call a little function. So if you type in player dot set fill color, we can change the color that is printed in. So we need to give it an SF color, and if you go a step deeper with SF color, you can see that I've pre-made a few colors for you. So black, blue, cyan, green, magenta, red, white, yellow, and transparent. So let's say you want to create a red cube, then we just simply type in red. And that will do it. If we run the program again, you will see that the cube is now red. It's that easy. That's basically all I want to talk about today. In the next episode, I'm going to explain to you how to move a player around on the screen. Thanks for watching.